For over a century, steam was the power that moved America. As the locomotives grew, the nation grew right along with them. From the earliest tea kettles running on rickety rails in the 1820s, steam locomotives grew to be powerful, high-speed giants. Generations of boys grew up answering the siren call of the steam whistle. Countless rail fans and photographers were drawn to the tracks, captivated by the unique language of steam. Four exhausts per revolution of the drivers, the thumping of the air compressor, the harmonic whine of the generator. For them, the steam locomotive was the railroad. As the fires were dropped on railroad after railroad, Fans sought out the last bastions of steam until the last locomotives disappeared from the main line in 1960. Many hung up their cameras, vowing never to return trackside in a dieselized world. Fifty-three years after the end of mainline steam, examples of these machines of a bygone age continue to operate. In this program, we'll see a 1907 consolidation at a museum in Illinois. We'll see a 1906 Mastodon on a Pennsylvania tourist hauler. We'll see a 1904 consolidation on the main line in Tennessee. And we'll be on hand as a 1944 Berkshire hauls the first public excursions around Horseshoe Curve in over 30 years. All aboard for steaming in 2013. South of Champaign, Illinois, on Canadian National's main line, we get a glimpse of railroading in the 21st century as Amtrak's southbound Illini slows for the Norfolk Southern Diamonds at Tolono. Shortly, a northbound CN Freight heads up the main line toward the yard at Champaign. Just 15 miles to the west, we find a repository of railroads past at the Monticello Railway Museum. It's here that we begin our journey. Backing through the museum's Camp Creek Yard is Southern Railway Consolidation number 401. This locomotive was built by Baldwin in 1907 as a medium-sized engine for secondary freight and branch line service. Returned to operation in 2010, the 401 operates one weekend per month from May through October and is one of the star attractions at the museum's annual Railroad Days in September. During railroad days, diesel-powered trains operate alongside the 401 on the museum's main line. Number 401 gets the highball and backs away from the Nelson Crossing Depot for a run to Whiteheath and downtown Monticello. New to the museum in 2013 is Stair Tower, 
a replica of an Illinois Central interlocking tower named in memory of longtime IC operator and museum member Richard Stair. An operator in the tower directs the proceedings as three trains and a number of track speeders share the main line. After backing to Whiteheath, the train reverses direction. Now running engine first, the train proceeds to downtown Monticello.
401 pulls to a stop at the restored Wabash Depot in Monticello. After a few minutes, the train returns to Nelson Crossing.
We conclude our look at Southern Railway 401 as she pulls ahead to the Nelson Crossing Depot. As the steam engine exits stage right, Wabash F7 number 1189 takes a train downtown. From central Illinois, we moved to southeast Pennsylvania and one of the oldest tourist lines in the U.S. Outside the engine house at East Strasburg, former Norfolk and Western Class M480 number 475 is being readied for a day of hauling tourists through the heart of Pennsylvania Dutch country. A rare Mastodon type number 475 was built by Baldwin in 1906. She was an example of heavy freight power on the N and W, and the M's were mainstays on heavy freight trains until they were supplanted by the Malays beginning in the mid-teens. They spent their latter years in branch line service, and the 475 last worked the Blacksburg branch in Virginia before retirement. After changing hands several times, she ended up at Iowa's Boone and Scenic Valley, where she was purchased in 1991. She entered service on the Strasburg Railroad in 1993 and has been a mainstay there ever since. These scenes were shot over several days in May.
attention please. Train number 120, the Lemon Place Limited, is now arriving on track number two. Please stand clear of the tracks on the bridge behind the cement walkway and allow passengers to get off the train before you attend the board. As number 475 steams towards East Strasburg, we leave the Keystone State and head south of the Mason-Dixon line to southern Tennessee. We are alongside the Norfolk Southern Main Line near the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum in East Chattanooga. Restored Southern Railway Consolidation number 630 is leaving the museum on the first of four 42-mile round trips to Cleveland, Tennessee on the former Southern Main Line to Knoxville. The 630 was built by the Richmond Works of the American Locomotive Company in 1904. Steam-starved fans flocked to Johnson City, Tennessee to see the 207 and 208 at work on one of the last steam-powered short lines in the U.S. The Southern traded a pair of diesels to the Tweetsie in exchange for the pair of 280s in 1967, and they regained the original identities as Southern numbers 630 and 722 in excursion service. The 630 was donated to the Tennessee Valley following her retirement from the STEAM program and returned to operation in 2011 after a complete rebuild. These scenes were filmed over the course of a single weekend in September.
As the 6.30 returns to the museum, we wrap up our visit to Dixie and head back north to the Keystone State. It's Memorial Day weekend and Nickel Plate Road 284 number 765 is running from Enola to Gallitzin, Pennsylvania on the first of three round trips. The 765 was built for the Nickel Plate in 1944 by the Lima Locomotive Works and was first restored for excursion service in 1979. Since then, she has ranged far and wide, operating as far north as Michigan, as far south as Tennessee, east to New Jersey, and west to Missouri. Now operating on her second rebuild since the Nickel Plate retired her in 1958, her Memorial Day weekend runs over Horseshoe Curve marked the first public steam excursion over the former Pennsylvania Railroad main line since 1977. These scenes were shot during three round trips over the three-day weekend.
As the train rounds Horseshoe Curve and disappears up the mountain, our show draws to a close. While the end of steam may have been over a half century ago, there are still plenty of locomotives steaming in 2013. Want to see more? For more of 765's runs over Horseshoe Curve, check out Steam Returns to Horseshoe Curve. For more on 630's trips to Cleveland, check out our DVD and CD combo, Southern Railway 630 on the main line to Cleveland. For more on the 401, we have the DVDs, Southern Railway 280, number 401, Return to Steam, and the Monticello Railway Museum. Coming soon in 2014, look for the release of Strasburg Railroad 475, a Class M in Dutch country. All these titles and more from Diverging Clear Productions.